why I'm wearing a bikini, people. And it's ain't for show, it's hot. <laughs> Surprise! That's right, the next boat on the boat tours is our very own 1985 Niagara 35 Plaintiff's Rest. I've done a couple tours of her in the past, um, but it was right when I started making the videos. To be honest, they're kind of silly. Um, that's where video Annie was born. And they don't really show off the features of our boat that Philip and I believe make it a great cruising vessel. So I wanna share those with you. Those of you right now looking for boats, shopping for boats, um, I'll show you why we like this boat, what we like about it, um, the things we didn't like and changed, and you also get to see all of the things we did at the shipyard the last three months, so I can really show that off to you. So if you're on board for all that coolness, then come aboard. So one of the things that was really important to us about this cockpit, um, because Philip will tell you it is one of his most important places of the boat. It has to be the most comfortable because it's your living room, your bedroom, your um, you know kitchen sometimes. It's where you spend probably, at least us, about 80% of our time on the boat. So very important that it feels just right. What we like um, primarily about ours are the benches that go all the way across on each side so a crew member can lay down um, completely, perhaps sleep on watch, sleep on deck, and just fully stretch out and relax in the cockpit. Um, some of them have a T-shape cutout. Um, you'll notice for the wheel, so people can get in and around the wheel easier. Um, it's just, if you can't stretch out completely on the cockpit seats, that's a huge, huge downfall for us. So that's one thing about this cockpit that is super important. Another big factor for us is visibility from the helm. On ours, I can see, you know, straight ahead through the isoglass, or I usually, <laughs> I like to stand up like this, and then I can see, I can stand up fully without my head clearance, and I can also still see forward. You also notice we have a very clean pedestal. Um, we are not a fan in any way, shape of all sorts of gizmos here. Um, that's just a personal preference, you know, we want to be able to see forward and see the horizon, see the water. Um, so we just don't like any electronic panels right here. Where we do keep them is here. We had just installed the B&G. This is the Zeus 7-inch. Uh, and we also did another um, instrument here. This is strictly for wind. Our truck plotter also can do split screen, so we can have two screens at once and program that in. And you'll see, we believe, from the helm, still perfectly good visibility, uh, easy to see, and often I will sit here and push buttons and handle things for Philip, and then they stay out of the elements. So these are highly protected underneath the Dodger. Uh, our old owner had them here, and initially we kind of thought it was too far away, we didn't like it, but as um, we cruised and used the boat, we found it was the perfect place for our electronics. Another super important feature to us on the boat is our swim ladder. Uh, you've probably been able to tell from blog posts and videos that we love to be in the water. That's a huge part of cruising for us is to be able to easily get in and out of the water, jump in for a swim, anything you need. So one really cool feature um, of our boat that our previous owner had done already, so it was um, this way when we got it, but it's a swim ladder that extends out extra. So when you plop it down in the water, it's not just that one rung there that you have to step on and crawl up. You actually get like an extra two deep down in the water so you have a nice safe um, access in and out of the water. We did the hydraulic autopilot, which um, I have a whole video on that, and we planned it right here. It did used to be right down here. That was the mount for our autopilot previously, which was um, uh, wheel mounted, wheel drive, auto helm, I think 3000. So we moved it over here. That way it's not in the way of like foot traffic and used to when we'd have to control the autopilot you'd punch down here. So you sort of lose sight of where you're going and what's going on up here. Now you can still sit up straight, have good visibility, and control your autopilot here. Ours can be programmed um, on a remote device so we can control it actually from the helm. We can go sit up there and steer the boat, which is pretty cool. <laughs> we have our propane locker here. That's where we have uh, two 10-pound propane tanks with a solenoid. All right, port lazarette. This is the big Mamma Jamma locker. And this is also um, one of the upgrades that we did 
uh, during the refit was to enlarge this locker because this is where we put all of our um, kites, you know, pumps, um, a lot of our really big toys. So the bigger the better. Go for it, take it out. You can see that tab there? The wall used to be right here. So now it goes all the way back there. Ooh. Oh. We moved this wall back, um, which can come out, you know, if you need to get engine access. That's a board that can be taken out. But you'll see really, really nice and deep in here. And that's where we're going to store our kites. This is our um, hydraulic autopilot. We built that box to protect it mainly. So, you know, if things fall in here and people step in here or whatever, it won't get smashed, but it's right underneath that box. It's just you pop it in the water and it fills itself. Inside that, we have our Mantis bridle. Um, we got the Mantis bridle about six months ago. We haven't used it much because we've been in the shipyard, but um, it definitely is a, a great way to secure on anchor and take the weight off of the anchor at the windlass and put it on both equally spread to the bow cleats. So definitely are pleased with the Mantis bridle. You just have to learn how to set it up right. <laughs> I'll tell you that Mantis folks, if you're watching, we need a better video on that, okay? <laughs> as far as the rigging goes, um, pretty standard sloop rig. We have a um, convertible cutter inner force day that we can run to run a storm sail, but um, that's just for kind of, you know, if we're gonna get into heavy weather, otherwise it's the main and the Jenny. And we have a 50 foot mast. We have to go offshore more often because our rig is too tall to go under a lot of the bridges around here. But it turns out we really like that. <laughs> so that worked out good. But it was our one sort of big compromise on buying this boat. We have a boom vane as opposed to a topping lift. You can see we have no topping lift. Um, we like it that way. I just like the clear horizon. You know, you just don't have an extra line run into the mast. Um, that's definitely, in our opinion, a plus. Uh, we like it that way. We've got one winch on the mast, which is great. We use this to raise the Jenny and the spinnaker, and if we need to, the stay sail, the halyard there. And you'll see we have our new, it's my favorite part. <laughs> we have our new 516 wire rigging all the way around. We went with high mods on each um, so that we can inspect the wires and uh, get a good look at them all the time. Um, as you know, one of the big downfalls we felt to rod rigging was um, it doesn't show its failure. It, it looks perfectly great until it explodes. So <laughs> we wanted something we could uh, watch, you know, and look for uh, cracked strands or anything going on here. Um, so we did on each one on our three shrouds on the side and our backstand four stay is all 5 16 wire. I'm that crazy lady walking around my boat talking to myself. I don't care. You guys deserve a tour, right? Here we have our, my best friend, the windlass, um, really great. And we have a 35 pound CQR. We are quite pleased with it. I uh, have just never had any issues. It holds well, does well. It looks rusty, but it's doing its job. Uh, the windlass, operate it right here with a foot push button. And you just have to have uh, the engine cranked because it has like a lot of ampage that it draws. Um, so that's the only thing you have to do there. We have a wash down, which is awesome connects to um, just a hose and a pump below and it pulls raw water on deck for spraying the anchor as we weigh anchor. Um, deck wash is super good. Uh, we had it go out one time and Annie had to do the bail bucket overboard about 50 times to clean off the chain before it went in the locker. All of a sudden I realized how great the deck wash is. All of our lines you'll see are run back to the cockpit. We have uh, the main halyard here and we have our Reef one, reef two, boom bang, and out haul here. And um, while that is a good thing, uh, you know, because you can control it from the cockpit, we found uh, the tension on the lines having to go from the mast to the cockpit, particularly for the main, raising the mainsail, is too much. Um, so I often go up to the mast every time we raise the main and um, help it up at the mast. So it's kind of a two, two man job. You'll see our poor steps here too. The varnish is just coming off because our ladder spends so much time in the water. Um, so we are thinking about doing the plastic steps, which I'm gonna order those soon and get those put on and we'll let you know what we think of those. Um, I think I'm okay with a little bit less uh, natural wood look down there if I don't have to varnish twice a year. That's the compromise we decided on. And up here, you'll see we have our solar panels. We have a 50 watt, a 50 watt, and a 100 watt. So a total of 200. And we've wired it all up to run right through this hole near the back stay and kept it nice and clean. We actually worked it into the canvas, which was cool. Just sort of happened that way. And then um, Brandon had the really good idea to do a heat shrink tube around it and keep it real nice and sleek where it feeds in right over here. 
so he did a little clamshell there feeds it into and we still check that down below in the engine room because we have had a little bit of leaking around that so um, you know every time you put a hole in the boat <laughs> you got to make sure it doesn't leak but uh, very pleased with these solar panels um, we went with the flexible version I did a whole series on the blog uh, I think like three steps of how we selected and mounted and wired up with the MPPT controllers and so so definitely go there and check it out um, just search for you know solar power solar panels on havewindwheeltravel.com and you can read on how we um, decided on this one of the other things we may do probably not this year before we go to Cuba because um, we're pretty good right now we have about five days we can stay out on the hook you know between four and five depending on cloudy and how much we use and all that um, but if we go, you know, next year we go to like maybe the Caribbean Circle or something like that, we will probably put more solar maybe on the Dodger or panels that we can just whip out and put out for the day. So a little more solar is probably something we'll be doing in the next year. All right, it's hot out here. Let's go down below. Here we go. Come check out our boat, shall ya? Plaintiff's rest. Ain't she a beauty? I love this boat. God, I'm so proud of her. And of course the bed still looks a little bit like a construction zone. But hey, I can fix that. Dang, isn't that cool? Beautiful, nice V-berth in here. We got great space. We love the big V-berth window right over where we sleep. Um, just really nice to have that. And you'll see we have screens. We have screens for every single overhead hatch that we can open. So that's really nice. And the side hatches as well, the screen. So we can open every window on the boat and it already has a built-in screen, which is super handy if you're in a place with lots of mosquitoes and bugs. Um, you know a lot about, we spent a lot of time in the anchor logger at the shipyard. Um, one cool thing we did though is uh, USB ports. Uh, these used to be like, I think for like cable TV, it's like totally ancient. Um, but now we have two USBs here and two near the nav station. So we've got a nice clean anchor locker here, freshly painted, and brand new chain, 200 feet for cruising. One thing we really love about our boat too is this um, separate stand-up hanging locker, just super spacious. We use these guys like Chester drawers. Just and that, it's so big, it fits down there, but that is our oil change um, pump, so we can actually change the oil on the boat while we're out cruising. spacious in here. Um, we still have a uh, mechanical head. You can get in here, it pulls from either you can go from the holding tank, there's our Y valve there, holding tank, out to the macerator or up to the pump out. And we have I think a 20, 20 gallon holding tank, 25. Plenty of room for us. One thing we did do though is clean out all the lockers during the shipyard you'll see they're all like the brightest white you've ever seen so everywhere is like super super clean love that another asset we feel on our boat is a really big plus is the separate stand-up shower stall you know completely separate from the head um, so you're not showering over the toilet if you live aboard um, you know and especially if you're at a marina or dock and you're not you know showering outside or overboard uh, it's awesome to have a separate stand-up shower stall but one thing that's really cool about our boat is we have rigged the um, shower head we did a big long extender hose on her, probably about looks like eight feet, and we can feed it out the window, and that's primarily what we do around the hook. We just shower up on deck, and that way it um, keeps the water out of the boat, and it's just easier to <laughs> jump overboard right after, you know, and then just do a freshwater rinse. So that was a really cool Phillips idea, and I rigged it up, and definitely a big bonus. And you'll know we just put this puppy back in. Um, we have a keel step mast, which we feel is a very big bonus. Um, adds the sturdiness of the boat and just makes it really solid. One thing we did um, learn during the shipyard, I feel was one of our big takeaways, was to always look for leaks, like just keep a constant eye out for any moisture you see anywhere and rather than trying to just keep it out of that area, find out where it's coming from, you know, the source of it and stop the leak actually from, you know, coming in to begin with, not just redirecting it because um, it can go places and rot things. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, so one of the things that we've decided to do since the shipyard is we no longer keep uh, the screws in the floors just because we don't we don't really need it and then you can easily pull them up and look underneath one of my big words of advice I cannot stress this enough we feel like it is a super priority now and we do it all the time 
Lift your floorboards. Get into your build. See what's going on down here. Super important. So we have really easy access. You know, no screws, no anything. I just pull those up. I usually pull those two boards up every time I come on the boat. But um, this was, you know, sort of the heart of the big, big issue we found. So just for me, peace of mind, it's a place I want to look, see that it's solid, you know, and just feel the benefit of all that work. And then also look into the bilge and make sure the bilge is dry. We don't have leaks. It's not wet. You know, we don't have anything going on down here. We have here, you guys are very familiar with the sump box that we put in. Very cool device. It captures water from the fridge. And over here, the anchor locker, the mast step, and the shower. So all hoses lead to going overboard via the head sink, which is really, really cool. Another really cool feature about these floorboards so that just come right up. Just pick them up and open. Is right here is our batteries. We have four Trojan wet cell batteries. Uh, we put these in very soon after we got the boat. It was around 2013 uh, that we, our old batteries, we're kind of on our last leg and then we made the mistake of leaving the boat at a marina. Um, it got unplugged and we had left the refrigerator on. So um, lesson learned there, you know, if you're gonna leave your boat somewhere, either make sure you know it's getting um, juice all the time or turn off everything. So that way in case it gets unplugged, because it totally ran our batteries down um, completely. So we had to get new ones. But this is great to have such easy access here because we can just get in here every 30 days and fill the batteries and it's not a huge chore. You know, it's just popping these caps and then you just put the floorboard back. Not much to it, so it turns that what normally could be a really big chore for a lot of people who have batteries in a very hard to reach place. For us, very easy, so definite benefit there. Um, we definitely have a lot of people tell us they just love the layout of our boat. Um, and I agree, definitely when you step below, to me, it feels a lot bigger than some boats that I've been on are their 40, 42 feet. You've got great storage, all kinds of places. Um, just definitely an awesome, awesome laid out living space in the boat. As you know, love to cook and eat. Uh, so spend a ton of time here. Um, we've got a three burner stove. One cool thing that I think is a very big benefit for our boat, we have the foot pump right there. So um, never using any electricity to get water. That's where we get primarily 99% of our water all the time. This guy's shoved to the side because um, we just don't use it a lot. So I'll show you exactly how much power the water pressure uses. Here, ready? Steel, but I mean that's power and you use less water um, even if you're trying your best with the water pressure if you just lift the faucet once you probably get three times more than you would with the foot pump so um, it's both conservative of power and of our water let's delve into the locker here you'll see this is where we mounted our computer for the autopilot so this is really great engine access, uh, I believe, because I can actually fit right there to do anything we need to on the engine. There's our um, a wall that we put in there to extend the port lazarette. So you'll see that was kind of just space that was down here in the engine room. It wasn't being used as much, so it's definitely better to have it in the port lazarette. We can see our steering, we can check our steering cable, our quadrant, just by looking in this one little hatch, which to me is a really big benefit. So, And yes, I do fit in that hole, I have proof. Every time we come in um, to the dock from being out, we shut the uh, sea comp for the engine, and that's how we access it right there. So it's good to have it easy in and out. And this is the other USB port that we did. We put in there. We should keep its little cap on. Um, that way, we have a great way to charge our phones. They usually sit right here, you know, in the companion way where you're reaching and grabbing everything. I think this area is super important. Sorry, just me personally. If you can organize that like a divided cubby and we keep all of the things you kind of grab all the time. Here's our primary tools that are used for like the main things, open the windows, check the transmission, screwdriver for everything, but they stay right there and they always stay right there or you get in trouble on my boat. It's just the truth of the matter. All right, so one of the main things that I realized I didn't do in the previous tours is show you our really freaking cool engine access on the Niagara. Um, every time we leave the dock, we check uh, um, all fluids. We check the transmission, the oil, and the coolant. Um, so easy access to the engine is super important to us. And I didn't even show you last time how it works. Are you ready for this? This is really exciting. 
make sure the drawers are shut. And then you grab this guy. And you pull him back. Just like that. And we prop him over here. Let him slide into place. Voila. Engine access on the Niagara. Really, really cool um, that it's designed where all the hoses run down here so there's no hoses in the way. It doesn't interfere with the sink and the water system, any of that. It doesn't act, you know, the foot pump's still fine. And you've got great, great access right here to the engine. This is all we have to do to, um, every time we leave the dock, check the transmission. That's why that tool is there, you see? Um, right here, check the transmission. Lipstick, make sure we got pink on it. And then I take one step over, get the dipstick, check our oil level. She's looking great. And then pop right down here, check the coolant. I always like to put it on there because it'll really, really show you. So our coolant looks great. And then I tell the captain, fluids are good. That's my process. Uh, we do it every single time and uh, make sure you have your seacock open. That's like the next step usually when I get out of here, just kind of reminds me that's the next place I need to go to make sure the seacock's open. I turn on the starting battery form right there. Big bonus on the Niagara, we can combine our batteries. So if um, say the engine was having trouble starting, if I say right here, combine, then it pulls from the house batteries and can crank the engine. Uh, super bonus just you know if one battery starts dying it's helpful to be able to pull from others until you can fix the problem or get to safety. If for some reason you feel you do need more access you can also remove the stairs which is not too hard. And then you just put her back. Just make sure to slowly let her down. And there she goes. That's it. Engine access on the Niagara. Pretty cool huh? Yeah. I can't believe I didn't show you guys that last time right? I was like thank you. And I believe that is officially everything. So now you've got a really good detailed tour. I hope I've been able to show you um, why we think this is the perfect boat for us. In, in all respects, it's very simple. And that's, that's intentional, says Philip. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this tour and I hope any of you out there boat shopping, you know, if you see some of the systems on this boat, have questions, shoot me an email, happy to answer. Check out on the blog. Like I said, we did a lot of stuff on the solar panel. We've talked about a lot of, um, all the shipyard videos, of course. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for coming aboard. Like bad Annie, I kind of don't want to show you this. We've got water in the bilge. Want more of this really cool content? Great. Go to havewindwilltravel.com where you can follow on the blog or get free e-copies of my sailing books and consider becoming a patron for access to my exclusive Atlantic Crossing footage and help us help one of you get out on the water too. Get inspired and get on board. I know, I know. But it's because um, we know we have one more leak. It's the um, nav light on the stern that I haven't gotten to yet. That's one of my projects. And um, uh, it lets in rainwater and we had horrendous downpours you saw recently um, in Pensacola. So that's why water's down there. It's not from a leak we don't know about or haven't fixed. So. Don't say anything. I don't want to see in the comments below. Oh my God, there's water in your bilge. I know, it sucks. I'm gonna suck it out right at the end of this video, I promise. <laughs>